Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game, whoa, The Reckoners. This was sent to me by Nabu Games, and it's designed by Brett Sobel and Seth Van Orden. Ten years ago, a mysterious burst in the sky gave ordinary men and women extraordinary powers. They're called epics. But every epic turned out to be evil. Today in the city, once known as Chicago, an all-powerful epic named Steelheart reigns supreme. Nobody fights back. Nobody but the Reckoners. This is where you come in. You are a member of the Reckoners, a skilled group of normal humans who assassinate epics. Together, you and your fellow Reckoners must work cooperatively to take down Steelheart and save the city. Let me show you how to play. So the Reckoners is a cooperative game where you are trying to defeat Steelheart. Uh, you immediately win the game if you defeat Steelheart and reduce his health to zero. This is Steelheart's board over here. Uh, you want to reduce that to zero. Uh, you lose if the population track reaches zero. Basically, if too many people die on this population track. In the Reckoner phase, everybody rolls their dice. Now, on the first roll, you have to keep at least one of those dice. So let's say I keep this one. Then, I can roll them again. And in this case, I'll keep these two. You can keep as many as you want per roll. And on the final roll, I get these. So these are the dice that I have to work with for this round. Then, once everyone's done with that, you simultaneously use the dice in, to do different actions, which I'm about to go into. Each character also has a special thing, like Doc, or not Doc, <laughs> but a prof here has Lead the Way, which he can use once per round a green skull die as three red uh, die faces. I'll go into what these mean in a second. First off, you can use any die to move. So if I put a die here, I can move from one city district here to any city district. Uh, they don't need to be adjacent. So if I was here, I could go over here. You can also use another die to get rid of barricades. Uh, barricades are these things that enemies will put up to block your movement. They look like this. If you have a barricade in a city district, like let's say there was one here, uh, nobody can move in or out of that city. So if I wanted to move over there, I would have to use one die to get rid of this barricade and then another die to go over there. Now let's go over the other die faces. The money symbol, that just gives you $1 towards buying equipment. If you look over here, your team has a bank uh, and each one increases the money by a dollar and then you can buy equipment. I'll go into the equipment later. Red attack uh, faces like this kill reinforcements. Uh, so these guys are bad guys. Uh, each red die face kills a guy if you're on the same space as them. A blue die face like this is called containing an epic. Epics have these actions that trigger at the end of the round. Uh, so if you are on the same space as this epic, you could use a die face to move this left. Now, this epic will only use these two actions on their turn. The research die uh, lets you research their weakness. So, stasis here, for example, has infinite health and cannot be hit. However, uh, at a research level of four, each time you spend a purple die, you can move this down, down, and when it's finally researched, then she only goes, she goes down to three health and can be uh, killed then. Even if they don't have infinite health, like this guy, Warhead, uh, if you research him all the way down, he drops immediately to three health. Skulls are what you use to attack epics. If I'm on the same space as an epic, I can spend a skull, bring down their HP. And finally, you have the plan face. Plan gives you these plan chips. These are wild tokens you can use. However, you can't use these tokens the same turn you get them. So when you get them, you set them maybe like to the side or we did it here. And then at the end of the round, they go into your stockpile. But every character starts with one. And what this can do is this can do any one of those actions, whether it's move, bar uh, remove a barricade, or one single action of any of the die faces. Now, depending on the character, some of them have special double faces, like the Prof has, he can get two wild tokens. Uh, the blue character can get, can contain two epic points at a time. Um, they all have different specialties. Also, they have different character powers. I'll go into those later. 
Now, the main focus of this game, though, even though you're trying to kill these epics, um, is you want to defeat Steelheart, like I mentioned before. Much like the other epics, Steelheart, if you're on the same space as him, you can use blue dices to, to, to contain his powers. He has four different power tracks here. Um, in, the, in the beginning, you have to research him. Uh, you can do that and bring down his research. Once he's down, once his research level is down to zero, it starts at like a high level. Then it get, this gets removed and then you can attack him. But only until then, you're not allowed to attack him. Steelheart also is represented by this piece here and he moves around the board randomly. So you have to move to him if you want to influence him. So after the Reckoner phase is done, uh, let's say we killed um, this epic and um, I don't know, how about this epic, okay? So we killed those epics. Each epic you defeat gives you reward. So Stasis, if you look at the top right, gives you uh, three research towards Steelheart and two dollars. So you increase your money and reduce Steelheart's research level. Powerhouse here gives you three research towards Steelheart and you can kill two guys on the board. And wham. Different bad guys give you different rewards but they all usually give you stuff towards, you know, killing guys or containing them or getting money and so on and so forth. Then everyone can purchase equipment. So let's go into what some of these equipment can do. This rifle, just once per round, you tap it and you can use it as a free skull. Uh, this one is a drone. Uh, you can tap it and you can kill two red guys in any city district. Uh, this Goss gun gives you an extra red die to roll. Uh, that's also important because later on I'll show you Steelheart can actually steal dice from players. But it's also nice to have, you know, more choices with your dice. Uh, Looks like the motorcycle is free movement. They all give you little perks and benefits, uh, and they're pretty useful. Once you're done with buying equipment, then the epic phase happens. First off, new epics are drawn into the cities where you defeated them, and they start at one action each. Then every epic activates, and they activate depending on what actions they have. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through all these right now, but they would Warhead would do these three actions uh, and they would all do the same thing. They would all do the actions that are within their brackets. Then after that, this is important, every epic increases in power. So they by default go up by one. However, if there are these red guys on here, then they go up by one plus how many there are. So this guy's gonna go up one, two, three. And so if we don't kill him or reduce or contain his power, next time he's gonna have four actions he's gonna do. Then you go to Steelheart's board and all of his actions activate. However, his bars don't increase. Only other epics actions will increase these. Uh, but these are pretty bad. I'll get into these in a second. Now, if I didn't mention it before, all your actions you do are simultaneous. So. You can go in any order, like one character can use one die and another character can use another die and so on. Let's go through the character powers. Um, I mentioned that Prof has, uh, he can convert one skull to three red. Likewise, Checkmate for the red player uh, turns blue into three green. Faith lets you re-roll as many of your dice uh, as you desire. Um, it can be only done during the roll dice step and it cannot be used to re-roll dice kept from previous re-rolls. So it's basically like another uh, free re-roll. Sniper lets you place a sniper token on any district, and then this character can use uh, dice or cards as if they were also in that district. Improvise just lets you change one die result of any die. And Operations, this lets you give a plan token to any other player from the supply, and they can use it that turn if they want. These are the other characters, Abraham, Megan, Tia, Cody, and David. So now let's go through what these epic actions actually do. The first one is fortify, like Night Wielder here. This purple green symbol means, and actually they have arrows here. The epics next to Night Wielder all uh, increase their health and research by one. So he's really annoying because he can basically heal the others. This red symbol here, if there's an arrow on it, uh, that means increase enforcements 
So the city district's next to this guy. I'm gonna get more guys. This is purple symbol for people. That's just straight up kill population. So he kills two people. There's also increased Steelheart's power. So this will increase Steelheart's red meter. Uh, this one here will increase Steelheart's yellow meter. So each time that happens, Steelheart's powers get stronger. So just looking at Steelheart's board alone here, he would kill five people. And this one, he actually can steal dice. So what happens if there are three of these symbols, this meter goes down three. Once it hits the bottom, you guys, uh, the Reckoners have to forfeit one of their dice. Uh, not each player, but one of them. And so, as a result, it would get stuck here. It can be bought back for $2, but it's very annoying. Um, this uh, would add more reinforcements, and in this, this case, it'd be seven in groups of three. And then this adds barricades uh, to the board, which block your movement. And that's pretty much the game. You do actions and simultaneously run around the board, try to research and kill the epics, get rewards, take out reinforcements, you know, uh, buy equipment and try to weaken Steelheart. And once you kill Steelheart, that is the end of the game. Or if your population runs out, you also, or you lose. Uh, and that's the game. So this game was interesting. I think first off, presentation-wise and component-wise, it's gorgeous. I think the art's really well done. The components are solid quality, like really fun custom dice, the game trays for everything. It almost borders on overproduced, but I don't think that's a problem, honestly. A lot of love was put into making this look and feel great. I also think the overall gameplay with, you know, your Yahtzee-style dice rolling and the simultaneous co-op is fun. It's not too complicated, it's fun running around using the dice to, you know, beat up epics and bad guys and research things. The whole researching bad guys to weaken them is a fun concept. My main problem with this game, though, is that it almost kind of punishes you for defeating epics. One problem is that when you kill an epic, you draw a new epic, and that epic might actually be worse. Uh, if And sometimes, like, in a way that you can't even really control. Because one thing I forgot to mention is that... You know, if so, if a the uh, epic control bracket goes too far, it just starts triggering the last one over and over again. And if you're just unlucky, that can really screw you over. That and also, uh, after you fully research Steelheart, the reward uh, for the research rewards on the epic cards don't do anything. So suddenly you are stripped of half of the rewards of killing epics. If anything, the game almost encourages you to not kill them and just use the blue dice to weaken them. Because if you can weaken them, at least you can control them, which I guess is a valid strategy, but then A, it becomes too simple, and B, there's this whole thematic side of the game you're just ignoring. They give you all these epics to fight, it's fun getting rewards, it just feels like a huge oversight, and like why would you suddenly take away half the rewards for like the second half of the game? That and, I don't know, like, it doesn't feel like you get enough for killing them, or at least enough of a consequence for not killing them. And it feels like you can just kind of metagame it and go, okay, well, just don't kill them. Just weaken them down to one, and they can't really do anything, and then just beat up Steelheart. This is a mixed bag, because I think overall it is a fun game. I don't think it's balanced super well. If you're a fan of the novels, which I've never read, I think this is absolutely worth a purchase if you're a fan. If you like co-ops, I think this is worth checking out. If only because I think the theme and presentation is good, the gameplay is fun, but the balancing is pretty flawed. It just doesn't quite make it past the finish line for me, so I can't full -heartedly, wholeheartedly recommend this. But, uh, I think it's okay. I think it could have been great. I unfortunately think it's just at a pretty good but flawed level.